Okay, g'day all, welcome to another video. So it's been a little while and I thought I'd start up a, a few new series. Uh, this will be the first of a new series on Python programming. Uh, my brother is learning Python and a few other languages, learning programming, and yeah, I thought I'd make some videos to help him out or anybody else that wants to watch. Um, okay, so for today we're just going to be looking at basically installing Python and maybe running a few simple little tests to see if everything's up and running. Um, so you'll notice a few weird things about today. For one thing, you can see my face. Uh, I don't know if I'll do this every time or just, I don't know, as a test. I just wanted to see how it all work out. Uh, if it's too distracting, then uh, maybe we won't do it. But um, yeah, you can also see my desktop. It's not usually this clean, but I tidied everything up because I knew I'd have visitors. Alrighty, but Python. Okay, so Python is a great little language. It's pretty much able to make anything. I mean, you can make games on it, you can make apps on it, and it's really good for if you're learning programming because it's a real language, you know, it's a legitimate language, but it'll also teach you a lot about other languages as well. So when you learn Python, uh, you're really learning a lot about like Java and C++. You're learning a lot of uh, just the basics to programming. So it's really good for that. Uh, Python is also really good if you uh, want a language where you just want to test out ideas, uh, make little prototypes of programs like that. Um, yeah, maybe you don't want to go to C Sharp and make a full Windows app or whatever. Yeah, Python's great for that. Alrighty, but Python is an interpreted language, so the CPU doesn't inherently understand it. We need to download a Python interpreter, so that's mostly what we'll be doing today. And I'm using Windows. If you want this uh, in Linux, we can probably do another video on that, but um, I'm using Windows. So this is the Python interpreter just here, uh, but I'll show you where to get it. If I remember, I'll put a link in the video description of where to get it. But you just Google Python, uh, go to the website, uh, the download page, I should say. And you've got two options. Um, a new version, version 3.6, or you can also download the old version, 2.7. Um, just get the new one, really. Yeah, I don't know why they still have uh, uh, 2.7 available. It is the default on Linux, but I mean, yeah, 3.6 is better, and you can install that on Linux as well. So regardless of what operating system you're using, I recommend you get uh, 3.6. Just click that and uh, save the file, but save it to somewhere where you know, uh, because we need to find it. Uh, I won't download it. I'll just click cancel because I've already downloaded it. Okay, so this is the file just here. I've actually downloaded both of them. We can delete that one. That's um, 2.7. Uh, this is the installer just here, and we'll click on that to install Python, uh, the Python interpreter. We click run. Now, the temptation is to click install now, but I tell you what, that's not a good idea because look at the path that it installs it to. It's just, it's absurd. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's in the middle of nowhere. So click customize installation. This is a far better option. Um, all right, so the checkboxes can stay the way they are on the first page. We click Next, and on the second page, um, install for all users. If you've got multi-users on your computer, there's only one on this computer, so I'll just uh, leave it unchecked. Uh, that one's good. Create shortcuts for installed. Yeah, that's good. Add Python to the environment variable, so we'll check that. Um, if I remember, after we've installed it, I'll show you what that does. Uh, Pre-compile the standard library. So that's going to mean that it takes a little bit longer to install, but hopefully your programs will run quicker. So check uh, pre-compile that, pre-compile standard libraries, and leave the other two unchecked. All right, but the main thing that you want to do is change the installation path to somewhere that you know. Uh, later on, I think we'll probably be using um, Visual Studio. And um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to want to know where Python is installed to. Uh, so I'm just going to change that to C colon slash Python, make a new folder on my hard drive called Python, and I'll install it to there. All right, so this will take a little while, especially if you've installed your, um, or you're pre-compiling your uh, libraries. Yeah, good stuff. So for this um, series, I actually asked the question on Facebook whether we should make a new channel and put these... Um, popular language introduction series on a new channel or put it on the main channel. And uh, the people, the followers on Facebook of What's a Creel said, let's put it on the main channel. So here it is. Yeah, hopefully it all works out. Uh, hopefully we can get onto some low level programming as well. I'm thinking about um, redoing a lot of the earlier assembly videos that I did. The, 
the early ones that I did are just terrible. There's only sound coming out of one uh, one ear, and um, yeah. So I was thinking about redoing a bunch of those. I think I could explain things better uh, in assembly. Plus, things are changing. I mean, CPUs are always getting better. Yeah, so maybe we can do that in the low level stuff. This will take a while. It's pre compiling those libraries. We'll have a look at um, three ways to run uh, Python or to interact with the interpreter in just a moment once it's finished installing. And next time, I think we'll just use Visual Studio since I think that's a good way to go. Yeah, using an IDE is generally better. That means you just get a bunch of extra options for debugging your programs. Okay, pre-compiling the standard library, dash OO. Looks like it's nearly finished. I think I can hear someone's just come home too. Must be brother. Special thanks to Mark Hammond. Good on you, Mark. Good on you. Alrighty, but once it's installed, um, we want to interact with it in some way. So what I might do, first of all, is just make a, pro a folder on my desktop called Python. You can do that by right clicking, come down to new and go folder and Python. And I'll double click on that. Alrighty, so one of the things that we did when we set up Python, when we installed it just then, was we, we asked that it be included in the environment variables. And what that does is it means that Windows knows where the Python interpreter is. So if we go to the command prompt, and you can do that by holding down shift on your keyboard, right clicking on your mouse, and going down to open command window here. Um, what you'll get is the DOS prompt or the command prompt in the folder where you were. Um, okay, but if we just type Python like that, there we go, we're in the interpreter right now. So this is the Python 3.6 interpreter. Now, if you didn't set up the environment variables, Windows won't know what Python means. It's just gonna say bad command or file name. Uh, but this is the interpreter, so we might just have a bit of a test. Let's just say print higher. Yeah, there we go. So the, the Python interpreter, if you just run it without any extra parameters, if you just type Python from the command prompt, um, it's going to bring up this program that waits for you to type something, some statement, then it executes the statement and waits for another statement. Whoops. Yeah, so that's all it's doing there. It's just waiting for me to type a Python statement like print higher just here. Um, yeah, then it prints it out. Print is uh, just the uh, Python statement to print uh, information to the screen. Anyway, we're not we're not generally going to be using the interpreter. What we want to do is make programs. So if we just type exit, open close brackets, uh, you'll get back to the command prompt. Then you can type exit to get out of your command prompt. Okay. What we'll do now, I think, is make a little program. Um, yeah, and see if we can run it. So if we just go down to new. Um, you're going to want to make a plain text document. So if you come down to text document and just click on that. Um, you can use any text editor you want. I'm going to be using programmer's notepad. Um, I might call this tutorial1.py. So traditionally, Python programs or Python code files have the extension py. So put .py on the ng file and hit enter. Yes, I want to change it. Um, okay, so then use whatever whatever text uh, editor you want. Like I said, I'm going to be using Programmer's Notepad, so I'll just drag it over there. And our program, we might say um, print higher again. Why not? Um, I'll save that. If you were in uh, Python 2.7, you didn't need the um, brackets there. You could just do uh, print higher like that. Uh, but since Python 3.6, you do need the brackets there. All right, but we'll just save that little program and we'll come back to our uh, folder, our Python folder. I'll open the command window again by holding shift and right clicking, going down to open command window here. Okay, so only if we've got the Python environment, only if we've got the environment variables set up uh, can we do this. If you type Python and then pass the file that you just saved, which is called tutorial1.py. What you'll see is that Python executes the program. Higher is what we told it to print, just here. And then input means um, wait for a key to be pressed. So if we press a key, it exits our program. So that's another way to run a program. Uh, but this way, you know, we're not interacting with the interpreter directly. We're saving our program. 
And um, yeah, that's generally a better way to go. I might actually put a little prompt in here. Press a key like that and we'll click close. Okay, so the third thing that I wanted to show you, a third way to run programs is to place a desktop shortcut to the interpreter or to place a shortcut to the interpreter on your desktop and drag and drop your Pi files onto that shortcut. So if you come to your start menu, if you've installed everything okay, um, you should be able to search for Python and right click on the Python 3.6 um, shortcut, go down to open file location and this will take you to where the uh, start menu shortcut is. You just want to copy that and paste it onto your desktop. Okay, and once you've got that pasted onto your desktop, you can just drag and drop any of your Pi files onto that um, shortcut to run them. Let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. Higher. Press a key. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, so that's about all that I wanted to say in our little introduction to Python. Um, We'll probably be using Visual Studio later on. Uh, I think it's just a really good ID, IDE. It makes things really easy to debug. But um, yeah, for today, if you just want to play around, this is uh, the Python interpreter is just a little calculator. So if you type things in like three plus seven or, or four divided by two, it's just going to give you the answer. Quite cool. You can even do powers. So three to the power of eight. Just do two time symbols for power. Anyway, that's about all that I wanted to say, so thank you very much for watching and have a good day.